Welcome, everybody, to the Entrepreneurial CPA Show. We're here to help you take that deep dive in the knowledge you need to break through the box and punch above your weight. As always, I'm Garrett Wagner, your Entrepreneurial CP Channel host, and we've got a special returning guest today, Rafael Casa from Sage. Rafael, welcome back to the party. Hey, Garrett. It's great to be here again. Hope you're doing well over there in the, uh, the fancy basement set up. I love it. The, the fancy office. It's just a fancy office, my friend. So today, <laughs> no, looks good. you're, you're going to fill in for Dr. Sean. And I thought there's been some articles coming out recently. There's been some talking points about this whole debate on blockchain. And we've talked a lot about in the past on the show, public versus private. So it's a little refresher for everybody before we get into it. A public blockchain is essentially Bitcoin. It's a distributed network and there's no central admin or control. You need consensus of 51% of the nodes to authenticate a transaction. And that's the goal of blockchain was this libertarian idea, take power away from the government, take power away from corporations. Well, Raphael, like we know, corporations fought back and they created private blockchains. And this is where like the blockchain is 100% controlled by Walmart. They make up the rules, they're the administrator of the database, they set the path, they set the hash de designations, whatever they want. And there's the debate going on like, is one better than the other? So, you know, Raphael, we both read this article. We'll put a link below. What do you think on this whole debate, public versus private blockchains? Well, yeah, from, from uh, the Ernst & Young, the EY exec talking about this, I think there, there is, you know, merit to both sides of the argument from the public and, and private side. You know, what his discussion or his comment was, the only way that blockchains will deliver upon their true promise to the world is if public blockchain networks are preferred path for enterprises and investors because that it really is honing in on the concept of like you said libertarian side decentralized you know if anyone's seen you know that hbo silicon valley back in the day where you know, they built that pipe piper to be decentralized and that was the beauty of it that no one entity was able to you know completely control what was going on and so that's the beauty of it that's really what blockchain was you know, the idea around it, but also from a security standpoint, you know, it also, I could see where there's concerns. If you made everyone public, you know, I think there's only a certain level of um, understanding of what that security would look like from a public standpoint. And I, I think it maybe it, it could be from that standpoint where they feel that, you know, they're going to have, again, more control over security workflow, management, who gets to see what type of information. So, you know, I, I think there's, there's merit to both sides of the coin, but, um, but, but you know, ultimately it, it could be that this maybe sets a standard for a, uh, you know, a full, almost like a, like in the UK where we have the uh, GDPR, where a full, uh, you know, comprehensive set of standards for the government to apply across the board where it's uh, it's agreed upon from, a, from a, maybe the blockchain alliance board of what security is has to be set up for this uh, and the type of you know ethics that need to be involved with this yeah I mean I think I think I understand the fundamental concept for me it always comes back to that's great libertarian we both know some libertarians they want to take the, the power to the people less government but we all know that in today's landscape in the world we live in, you know, capitalism is what drives everything. And the big corporations, the big companies, the big governments aren't actually going to give up their control easily. And there are some benefits there. I mean, there's some drawbacks. There's some benefits when you've got, like when Walmart controls their blockchain for their supply chain, they know what's happening they set the rules and they can enforce important changes. Now they don't make a decision that's welcomed every single time, but you've got one administrative body that oversees things and sets the direction Versus trying to get mass consensus with everybody, what's going to go on? And then we've seen some forks sometimes, you know, that's a whole separate conversation and a separate show what a fork is where some of the nodes, you know, split off because they disagree with this change. You can't exactly have the U.S. government currency be on a blockchain and like 51% are over here and 49 are over here on this fork. And then this fork goes down and like there's different levels of, of currency. So I think, you know, for me, it's, Capitalism done right. You know, we're putting the right guardrails and structure in place, still creating the rules, but you know, we're ultimately some larger corporations are going to take hold of this. 
they're going to own it. They're going to want it to be private so they can control it much more delicately than the public side. And I think ultimately that's what's going to be better for consumers. Because I think the underlying thing we both agree on, blockchain technology is super important in more applications than just currency that's going to help everyone's lives be better and more successful as a result. Yeah, no, I, I agree I completely. I think you know, the capitalism part is, is, is really important in this for the, the private blockchains. And, you know, it, it does allow them for that really, that governance. And, and really all they're doing is just leveraging the platform of technology that's available to them to elevate their business, you know, and, uh, and I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. And I, I think that just maybe, you know, there could be some underlying motive as to why he's saying the things that he's saying from an Ethereum standpoint. You know, there could be some kickbacks there. Um, I'm not saying there is, but what I, but, but, you know, I see, I think there's a stronger argument, economic argument and, and capitalism argument to have it be private. Uh, and to, to go that route as opposed to a public, I think it's just going to be a bit more messy. Um, it's not like if you look at it from a standpoint, you've got your own Oracle database at your firm or we do at Sage. Um, you know, we don't want to share that information or have any type of SQL injection um, be available to happen in our, in, to get that information or to, to hijack the data that we have available. So, you know, it's the same kind of concept there at a, at a larger scale. Uh, but then as well as, you know, if, you look at how a large ID depart, IT department, such as like Sage, where they're able to fully have governance of everyone that's on the network, as opposed to being one of many that have governance in the network. And it just, things go uh, get put into a vacuum and then there's a lot more room for, um, for risk at that point. And I think that's what ultimately gets to that ease of use for the consumer side. You know, great, we'd like to not be part of this big corporate wheel and piece, but if you make it super easy for us through Walmart's supply chain or through Bank of America's um, cryptocurrency alternative and pieces like that, the world's gonna gravitate kind of like water. Water goes to the easiest path. Most people are gonna take the easiest path that it is to do it. If that easy path is private, because that's where the capital money puts it behind, and builds it out and continues to build it out and churn new products and new solutions, we're all going to kind of follow suit down that path. Most people aren't looking to make a difficult conversation and decision on their buying power. We all want what's easiest. And for me, that's why I think the private's going to win out. It also allows companies like Walmart to have a reason to invest this money in it because they can control it and they can see some direction and benefit to it versus it's public and it just kind of like pops up and now they're playing catch up. Like you said, does it integrate with their system and all their delicate pieces? And at the end of the day, I don't want to pay more for my products so that they can use a blockchain either. <laughs> right. Yeah, it'll, it'll eventually affect, you know, especially like toilet paper. It'll be the gouging happening. But I, I think it's, I think you're spot on too. I think that, uh, you know, if what they're doing is they're just leveraging, again, this technology to, um, to really expand the business and the fluidity. And if it's set up properly and they put in that investment into it, and Dr. Sean has really talked about this, of making sure how the blockchain is set up correctly and efficient and effectively. And if, you, if they do that, you know, Walmart really, really um, puts a lot of effort into making that transition in the blockchain for their suppliers. You know, that, that's going to be a, a much more quicker adoption for those suppliers to jump on that because it's a, it's it makes sense to them, um, and as well as from an auditing purpose, you know they have the ability whether it's public or, or private, they're going to have probably have some better auditing um, and some better tracking from that standpoint um, from what's from any intercompany type of transactions. So then, Raphael, final question for you in this timeless debate of blockchain, public versus private. Which aspect do you think is going to prevail in the long term? I just think you know capitalism is going to eat it. I eat, eat that for lunch. I think it's just the it's just going to be what what's going to be at the forefront. I think it's going to make much more sense for everyone from a governance standpoint. From not only from governance, but leaving the government out of it. Um, and, and I think it's uh, it's going to allow them to scale as well. I think private is just going to be the way to go. 
I agree as well. As, as much as I don't want more big government and more big corporation, I think capitalism is going to win and prevail in the future. So that's all our time for today. Thank you for tuning in. This little debate here on public versus private blockchains, which one will control the future? As always, you got questions, got your own opinion, let us know, reach out, and click to subscribe to the channel, stay up to date. And as always, we challenge you today to take action to change the world and invest in yourself.